Welcome back to Physics 141 Online. What I'd like to do here is show an example problem uh, that gives an illustration of how we can use graphical information in a qualitative way without using any numbers to get uh, information relating position, velocity, and acceleration behavior of an object. And so uh, here is a sketch that uh, I've been given. Let's say we watch an object that moves along the x direction and what's given here on the top graph is a graph of x versus t. So this object starts at x equals x0 which uh, I've drawn as positive and it moves according to this x versus t graph and what we want to do from this is sketch the velocity versus time graph and the acceleration versus time graph purely qualitatively no numbers involved but we need to use what we've learned about slope in order to do this. So just remember that velocity, which we write down symbolically in this calculus notation, is the slope of the x of t graph. All right? And in much the same way, acceleration which we call the time rate of change of velocity or the derivative of velocity with respect to time is the slope of the velocity versus time graph. So first we'll start with position and just think about what this means. What's shown is that the position stays at x0 for a certain amount of time so the person stays in the same place they're not actually moving. Then the position increases in a straight line fashion, and that's important, and then reaches another value of x and stays there. This is supposed to be a horizontal straight line. My shaky hand uh, makes it look a little different, but it's supposed to be a horizontal straight line. And then the x value decreases in a straight line fashion in our last segment. So this behavior is broken up into one, two, three, four different straight line segments. And so what I'm going to do for the purpose of doing a decent sketch is I'm going to use a vertical dotted line at each place where this curve changes its behavior. Alright, so there's one. Here's the other one. And this will allow me then as I do the sketch for V and then for A to make sure that changes in their plots occur at the right places corresponding to where the behavior of the X versus T plot changes. And this is something that's usually very helpful in drawing good sketches. So I just need those three lines because that divides up the velocity versus time graph into one, two, three, four parts and also the acceleration versus time. So, think about it for a moment. Velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph. What is the slope of the position versus time graph here? It's zero. The slope is equal to zero, which means the velocity during this whole period is also equal to zero. Now, I'm not going to draw it all the way up to the dotted line for reasons that will become apparent in just a minute. And uh, this is the kind of exercise where it's useful to have a pencil. Uh, and I do have an eraser on this sketch pad so I can erase my mistakes. Uh, but we now move on to the next segment where the position is increasing. Okay, where the person is moving to a larger x value. And the slope of a straight line is a constant. And in particular this constant is a positive constant because the slope is positive. So my velocity value jumps from being zero to some positive value and it I'm just going to draw it at some place here. It doesn't really matter where, uh, but I need to indicate that it's a positive constant value. So during this time, the speed is constant. The velocity is constant. Now, what does that mean about the place where those two straight line segments join each other? Well, if, if they actually meet in a straight line fashion and they're not rounded off, then what this means is the velocity jumps abruptly from being zero to this positive constant value. Of course that can't really happen in the real world so in, in the real world this behavior would actually show a little bit of a rounded nature to it, a smooth curve rather than an abrupt jump. And so I'll indicate that here by drawing a vertical line 
that connects those two segments. That's not probably my best effort there, but this is an attempt to show that those two regions smoothly connect to one another. All right. So now we go to the third region where the position of value is is constant again. So the slope of a horizontal line is zero, which means the velocity has to fall back to zero in this region. And once again, if I assume that it, it's smoothly continuous, the velocity quickly but smoothly goes down to zero, then it looks something like that. And finally, in this last segment, we have a downward facing line, which means that the person who was at a particular x value, or the object, now goes back in the other direction because the x value is decreasing and eventually reaches the origin and then keeps on going to negative x. So this describes the motion of someone who starts off at a value of x, who then goes to a larger value at a constant speed, stops for a while, then turns around and goes back in the other direction. So here, there's a negative slope. The slope is constant because it's a straight line, but the slope is negative. So that means I need a negative value for my velocity. And the only thing that's important qualitatively is, is the negative slope greater in magnitude or less in magnitude than the positive slope here? And I think you can see, because it's not sloping downward as drastically as the first curve is sloping upward, that it will have a negative value that's a little bit smaller in magnitude than the positive value that the velocity curve had here. Okay, So this draws things a little more properly to scale, even though I don't have any numbers to use. So once again, the velocity curve connects from one region to the other like that. And so what we can see here is the object started at rest, no speed, then it sped up very rapidly to a constant value here and moved for a while at a constant speed, then slowed down rapidly to a stop, again had zero velocity for a short time, and then turned around and changed its velocity to a constant negative value. So that's what this curve is representing, and now we can move on to do the acceleration graph, and that actually is pretty easy because the acceleration, remember, is the slope of the velocity graph. So we just have to work through it piece by piece, <laughs> and what we see is that the slope of the velocity graph in this first segment is zero, so the acceleration has to be zero. Again, I'm not going to go all the way up to the boundary, and we'll see why. The slope here is also zero. The slope in the third region is also zero. And the slope in the fourth region is also zero. However, that's not all there is to it, because the slope changes, right? The slope is zero, and then it becomes very sharply positive for a short time, and then becomes zero again. So how do I show that abrupt rise on the acceleration graph? How do those two regions connect? Well, like I just said, the slope, which was zero, becomes positive and large, and then becomes zero again. So what happens? That must mean that if it's starting at zero, the acceleration is the slope, it must go up to a positive value and then come back down to zero over a very short time. So I'm going to show this as a spike in the velocity or in the acceleration graph, right? It started off at zero for zero slope. It rose, and somewhere right in the middle there is where the slope became maximum. It had a maximum value, and then the slope decreased a little bit and eventually reached zero, and that's what this spike shows. So how about the next junction? We had a slope of zero. We end up with a slope of zero in the next region, so we've shown that on the acceleration graph, and in between, the slope became negative. So that means here, I'll have a similar kind of spike, but in the negative direction. And then back to the zero value here. And finally, you can see, once again, the same thing happens in this region, because the slope starts at zero. It ends up at zero, but in between, it's negative and very large. So once again, I need a negative spike in the acceleration graph. Okay. So again, this should illustrate the idea graphically of how we can sketch these kinds of curves qualitatively without needing to use any numbers using our understanding of the way that velocity is the slope of the position graph and acceleration is the slope of the velocity graph. You'll have occasion to use these sorts of things in class and in homework and I hope that this gives you some practice with them.
Here's one more example problem that is in some ways a little bit tougher because what I'm going to do is consider the motion of an object. We're given the starting position that it starts at x equals 0, but instead of being given position information, we're given velocity information. And we want to sketch the acceleration function and the position function. So remember that we're going to use the fact that a is the slope of the v of t graph, all right, and of course that v is the slope of the x of t graph. But we're going to have to work, when we go from velocity to position, we're going to have to work backwards and think backwards. We'll have to ask ourselves, if the slope looks like this, then what does the function look like that has this as its slope? So it's a little uh, more difficult, and we can do it, but we just need some practice in order to do this well. So let's do the easy part first. The easy part is to take advantage of the velocity information and find the slope of the curve and translate that into the acceleration plot. So what we see with the velocity is the object starts off at zero velocity, so it's not moving initially, but very quickly the velocity increases and does so linearly, and then eventually curves over and reaches a constant value. It does it in sort of a gradual fashion. Once again, I'll break up the regions, the time regions on these graphs into two in this case, it's a little simpler than the previous example because it's only two regions because the curve breaks. It stops being linear and starts to curve at a certain point. All right, And so what I can do immediately is realize that here I've got in the region starting at t equals 0, that's a region of constant slope. And of course, it's a positive constant. The slope of velocity versus time is the acceleration, right? So it's a positive constant. So the acceleration in this region is a positive constant. Again, I will stop just short of the dotted line uh, because I'll have to connect it to what comes later. So what happens after that is that the slope decreases. Right? The slope, remember, represents increase in y divided by increase in x. And so that's, co that's going along at a constant rate, so that there's a constant acceleration. But then the slope begins to decrease and eventually reaches 0. So somewhere, I don't, I don't know exactly the shape, but it should reflect how the acceleration then, as the slope, decreases and reaches 0. Uh, and it, and when we time we get out to about here, it's already reached zero. So, so here I should have a value that reaches zero somewhere out here. And my task is simply to show that there's some kind of decrease like that. Okay, that it decreases over. See, the, the slope is still positive here, but it's lower than it was initially. And eventually that smoothly reaches zero. Okay, so that's what the acceleration versus time graph looks like, and that's pretty simple. Um, but now we have to work backwards. Now we've got to ask ourselves, and this takes some practice. It's, it's, it's hard for me to do if I haven't done it for a while. I have to think to myself, what kind of a function is there that has a slope that's increasing? I'm sorry, that, uh, yes, that's right, because velocity is the slope of position, right? So since the velocity is increasing, that means that for the x graph, the slope is increasing. I'll use an uppercase arrow to show that. So the slope of x versus t has to be increasing, which means it can't be a straight line. It's got to be rising faster than a straight line. A straight line would have a constant slope, but the slope of the position, which is given in the velocity graph, is increasing. So all I know is it's got to start, now the slope starts off at zero, right? So it comes off of its original position with a zero slope, but that begins to rise, and it does so faster than a straight line would. See, so it, it starts off horizontally, and it rises like that. And that might look familiar 
as the shape of a parabola. We can actually use our knowledge of calculus to show, yes indeed, that a parabola is a function where the slope is linearly increasing. But I don't even need to know that for this question. All I really need to know is that it has to curve upward like this. All right. Now what happens to it here? Hmm. The slope then starts to, it's still increasing a little bit, but it eventually reaches a constant value. All right. So once we get further out here, and I don't have a lot of room to show this on the graph, but once, once we get further to the right in time, then the slope of position versus time should become a constant, right? So the slope reaches a constant in this region. What that would mean then is it becomes eventually a straight line, right? Because a straight line would have a constant slope. And it, the slope, of course, is po the, uh, uh, the ve velocity value is positive, which means the slope of the position versus time graph is positive. So it looks like something like this. Okay, so it's a little oversimplified, and I didn't leave myself a lot of room on the graph to show this, but the slope, which was continually increasing in the first region, became or approached a straight line here. So we have something that looks curved like a parabola, but then becomes a straight line. So I'll just indicate that here in case it's not obvious from my sketch. That x versus t is curved upward here, but then it becomes a straight line because of the fact that a straight line has a positive, the straight line has a constant slope. And in this case, yes, it's a positive constant. So take a look at this. Uh, we'll give some example opportunities in class to do this kind of graphical analysis, but it will greatly enhance your understanding of motion if you can work back and forth between position, velocity, and acceleration on graphs like this.